Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames here in Hollywood, California. The show is very proud to be sponsored by Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Nightclub in Eagle Rock, featuring weekly food specials by Chef Raul. And if you're looking for a cool place to have your party or banquet, why not use, utilize their newly remodeled intimate dining room? Please make friends with this show on Facebook. Just search for us on Facebook at Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. And we have a Twitter account at Denise Ames TV. Now, besides catching the show on our website, Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames.com, you can also see us on Blabbermouth.net, BraveWords.com, and many other premier websites. Today, we have a very exclusive and rare rock star interview for you. It's going to be Howard Lease of Heart. He actually allowed us to come to his beautiful mansion up on the hill in Malibu. Also coming up will be your viewer comments. This time around will be about our Great White episode, but first it's entertainment news. Before wrapping up the massive rock opera styled live show The Wall Live in Quebec, Canada recently, Pink Floyd founding member Roger Waters performed to sold out crowds around the world during this tour. According to All Access Magazine's Margie Moore, The Wall Live, which originally toured way back in 1979, was updated with tons of new technology this time around. The two-part show featured massive puppets of the wife, the mother, and the evil teacher. No, not the evil teacher. That part of another brick in the wall used to scare the pants off me when I was a kid and heard it on the radio. <laughs> During the live performance of that song on the recent tour, local students appeared on stage with the message, Fear Builds Walls on Their short Shirts. And let's not forget the flying pink pig. What would a Pink Floyd concert be without it? The stage also featured Fallen Loved Ones, a gallery of photos consisting of both military and civilian personnel lost in war. And 80s rock band Y&T celebrated their 30th anniversary here in SoCal at the Canyon Club in Agora Hills recently. And Craig Newman of All Access Magazine was there to witness the action. According to Newman, founder and singer Dave Menachetti announced that their hit album Black Tiger was released three decades ago. The, album, the, the band performed many songs off that album including Hell or High Water, I Believe in You, and the title track. They also did fan faves like Summertime Girls. Ha! Remember that interesting music video on MTV? Back when MTV was MTV? The guys getting buried in the sand on the beach with a bunch of bikini-clad chicks. Shocker! They really did that in music videos? Throughout their career, Y&T have performed with Dio, Whitesnake, Motley Crue, and Aerosmith, and they will be on the bill for next year's Monsters of Rock cruise. Well, don't go away, because coming up right after this quick break, it's going to be our very rare interview with Howard Lease of Heart. We'll be right back. Where can you enjoy live music every night? Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Jazz Club, located in Eagle Rock, the heart of L.A. Open daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, serving the city since 1954. Authentic Italian cuisine, generously poured cocktails, all served in a casual, festive atmosphere. Come for the food, drinks, and friendly people. Stay for the live music. Full bar area, private party room, catering, and takeout. For reservations, just call 323-254-9138. See you at Colombo's. Jimmy Eat World, Duran Duran, Dwight Yoko, members of Black Eyed Peas and Corn. What do they have in common? They all use Perlman microphones, super high quality bikes at very affordable prices. Every Perlman mic is handmade in the U.S. using top of the line tubes and technology with that classic look of the 60s. Each comes with power supply, handmade cable shock mount and carrying case, customizing and beetle style pop filters also available. Call 818-763-4581 or visit perlmanmicrophones.com. All the quality at a fraction of the cost. Perlman microphones. We are here in the lovely, I'm going to say mansion in the sky, because that's what it is, basically, <laughs> here in Malibu with the one and only Howard Lease. Of course, everybody knows you from heart, and you're also uh, in Bad Company mm -hmm. and the Paul Rogers Band. Thanks so yes. much for letting us come to your beautiful abode Glad today. Glad to have you. Let's just take it all the way from way back when you were born in Hollywood. This was a great place to be in the 60s because the local bands were the Buffalo Springfield, the Birds, the Doors. These mm -hmm. were like the club bands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. the Whiskey. The Doors yeah, played the Whiskey, right? the Whiskey and the Cheetah down at Venice Beach. And then, you know, I saw Jimi Hendrix. I saw Mike Bloomfield with the Butterfield Band, Peter Green with Fleetwood Max. Just some of the defining artists of the era, they all came through here. Mm -hmm. you know, Jeff Beck when Rod Stewart was the singer. You know, gigs like that, I, well, yeah. I was able to go and see some amazing concerts and really help form my, my musicianship. Dick Dale. Dick Dale. 
I just saw him not too long ago. Really? Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're pretty good friends. And we went up to Ventura. He was playing at, in a street fair. With the, the with the Deltones or on Yeah, his with own? his band. Okay. It's his, uh, his son plays drums, Jimmy. He's a great drummer. And Dick does the same show with the same equipment. If you saw him in 1962, it's the same show. He's been doing it all this time, and it's just as intense and just as amazing. And yeah, when I was a little kid, I went to the Teenage Fair at the Hollywood Palladium, and Dick Dale came out with a green metal flake Stratocaster and started going like, nah. Explain this one. You actually went to school and studied violin. <laughs> I was a music major at LA City College mm -hmm. here in town. And I, uh, yeah, I was a music major, so I took piano, voice, violin, and then theory classes. And the theory classes were really important, still, still work for me, because the uh, first thing I did when I went to Vancouver and started working on the first Heart record was to write the orchestrations and conduct the orchestra, because we had real orchestras on those first bunch of records. And so that's where I got the training to do that, right before I went up there to start working, I got the training to do that. Most people, like, would you know, get into a band because they were playing an instrument and that's how they got into a band. But you actually got into Heart because you were an assistant producer at Mushroom Records and you actually helped produce Heart's first album, Dreamboat Annie? Yeah, my friend Mike Flicker and I, we grew up here together in LA. We moved up to Vancouver and we had this studio and we started our own r little record label. And Heart was one of the first bands that we signed. And so I helped, mm -hmm. I just helped out. You know, they were a self-contained band. But I would do some keyboard parts, like I said, I did the orchestrations, and then towards the end when they were running out of time and money, I came in and did some of the guitar stuff and uh, helped get the, the record finished. I didn't join the band until quite a bit later. Were you looking to be in a big band? No, I said, <gasps> when they asked me to join, I said no. Really? Yeah, because I had a cool gig. I worked like two or three sessions a month and played tennis all the time. <laughs> and they were in the clubs six nights a week, five sets a night. That was something I was wanted to get away from. I wanted to be more of a studio guy, not a live guy. So I didn't want to join. So I said no at first. And then about six months went by and things started looking up, especially in Canada. This record was on the radio. People were getting excited. And so they came again and said, we, we need you to join the band. So I said, well, probably last a year or so. So I did it for 22 years. <clears throat> Had you stuck to your guns and said no, and then mm -hmm. Hart went on to do what they did, mm -hmm. would you have regretted saying no? Oh, probably, sure, of course. <laughs> well, he's honest. Yeah. All right, and you mentioned you had a great run, of course, for 22 years, and then you left the band. What happened? Well, we really stopped working. Uh, Nancy never really liked the road that much, and mm -hmm. she wanted to get off the road and have a family, so she, she stopped touring with us. Anne and I continued in the Ann Wilson Band for a couple of summers, that was a bigger band with horns and more of a R&B kind of a band, a real cool band. We did that for a couple of years and it really seemed like that was going to be it. Nancy didn't want to do it. It really wasn't hard anymore without both sisters. Exactly. And then I got an offer, you know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have left to join anything else, but I got a call from Paul Rogers and I tell the story. I did a gig with Ann Wilson. The last gig of the tour was Saturday night. I flew home on Sunday to Seattle. I was retired all day Monday, and I was thinking, finally, off the road, I'm done. <laughs> Tuesday, I get a phone call from Paul. Can you be in Detroit on Friday night? Here's the set list. I've been doing this band for 15 years Jeez. now. So. And going strong, because you guys were just in Sweden recently. We were just in Sweden with Bad Company. Uh, last weekend, I was in Pittsburgh with a Paul and a solo band. I go to New York next week. Behind the music, mm -hmm. they hit really hard on all the personal shenanigans that were going on between the girls and the guys in the band, and you know, this person's with this person, and this person leaves this person, blah, blah, blah. You're the only one that escaped with a clean slate. How did that happen, and why did you make the decision to not <laughs> get involved when everybody else was playing musical beds? Yeah, <laughs> well, because it was shenanigans, like you say. <laughs> you got to watch out for those shenanigans. Well, to me, I mean... Being in a band like that, you're together all the time. It's like being married to four or five other people mm -hmm. already. So you don't want to, it's hard enough as it is, getting along with everybody and seeing everybody all these hours a day. So you want to be careful about that and not make it any more complicated than it already is. And on the other hand, we were a huge rock band. And so it was hot and cold running beautiful women. You know, so. Why be tied down? <laughs> huh. There was just a lot of beautiful women, you know, that weren't in the band that mm -hmm. you could look at. So. I just thought it was smarter just to keep a, keep the music 
separate. Okay, well, you kind of did hint at kind of spilling the beans there. So did you chase a lot of those beautiful women since you weren't hooked up with the an an animals? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would have to say that uh, myself and the boys in the band were quite popular there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and we just want to mention he is married now, ladies. I'm happily married. Happily married, very happily married. <laughs> Get that perfect shot with Barbara Porter Photography. Barbara's innate talent and friendly approach is simply the best. Actors, musicians, that special someone, and pets. Her gift certificates make an excellent gift for anyone. And don't forget those holiday photos and greeting cards, a great idea for any occasion. To view some of her incredible work, visit myspace.com, bar reporter photography, or call 818-347-9472. your favorite heart album and why and then we're gonna ask your favorite song I think my favorite whole album is called Brigade mm -hmm. it was produced by Richie Zito and I like that one because Richie is a guitar player played in Elton John's band for a while so he spoke my language you know he knew a lot more than most producers of what we could do with the guitar so there's a lot of guitar on that record that, I, that I'm proud of and guitar solo on every song and to me, it's just uh, it was the '80s band, so it was a little bit more streamlined. The songs were good. We didn't write all the songs. We had amazing people writing for us by then, as well. And so, I think it was just kind of the best of both worlds. Had a had a big professional '80s sound, but it was still still sounded like heart. First five records or so were the the Seattle band, the '70s band, Steve Foss and Roger Fisher, Mike DeRocher. And so that band had its own kind of style. So when, gotcha. when we put the band back together in 82, um, I was given free reign to choose the bass player and the drummer. And so I got Mark Andes and Denny Carmasi. And that band just had a different sound by virtue of having different people in it. And there's a little bit of a different dynamic. And uh, a lot of people prefer the 70s band, the early band. And, uh, you know, so the 80s band was even more successful. And mm -hmm. so MTV. MTV was was a part of that. Absolutely, we made we made we spent more on the videos than the whole album, but uh, in a day we yeah. spent more than we would in six months making a record. But I like those I like those those records, and people think that some of that sounds slick, but actually they were recorded very basic. We all played together at the same time. My rhythm guitar is live with the drums and the bass. Wow, they don't do that anymore. They don't at even all. do that anymore. You're not even in the same room half the time. Yeah, no, we were all mm. playing live. Even half the vocal is usually live with the track. And, mm. and was really good about singing live with the track and always wanted to sing while we were cutting the track to inspire us. And so it was very, very live, done very live, but we're just um, precise players, so it sounds like it's kind of slick, but it's really not. I want to get your take on this. Poor Anne, she got so much flack mm. for gaining a few pounds. I mean, mm -hmm. big deal. What was your take on that? They made such a huge issue about that. And yeah. What do you think about that? I thought it was stupid. A, I mean, I think Anne's beautiful. She has oh, a she's face. She's stunning. She's stunning. She's very beautiful face so I've always thought since she was beautiful and B it's no, no one's business right. you know listen to her close your eyes and listen to that you yeah. know I mean it's, it's a once in a generation once in a lifetime voice she's the best white chick rock singer ever it was my privilege to do my thing next to a talent like that mm. you know and you know part of my job was to build the house to make her voice make it really work. Right. You, you and know, Nancy kind of surrounded kind her. Kind of range, guitars. make it so that the lead vocal really get, gets you, but yeah. boy, what a what an instrument, you know. So it was it was just a pleasure. I'd never had a a bad experience working with Anne. Mm. Loved every minute of it. What is your favorite heart song and why? Well, Barracuda was, would rank right up there because it's the song that just won't go away. Yeah, you know, all my kids' friends know it. Everybody knows it. <laughs> yeah, you even Everybody have a pedal name that your your guitar pedal will get to in a little bit. Named after Barracuda. Yeah. Okay, so besides yeah. Barracuda, because that's um, an obvious choice. Okay, um, Mistral Wind from Dog and Butterfly. Don't know that one. Yeah, it's a big epic ballad. It's, oh. it's about a guy sailing. So you like the ballads? On the ship. Well, it's a big, powerful, heavy song. It starts out oh. real quiet, and the sea is calm, and all of a sudden, this storm blows up. And the song gets gigantic. And I, I always love playing that one. We just played that one recently. Mm. It's a, 
That's a great song. I play, I play piano and, and guitar on that one. I always like that one. Are you in contact with Anne or Nancy? Yeah, I just talk, spoke with Anne uh, a couple weeks ago. We both have birthdays within a few days of one another, so we touched okay. base on the birthday thing. And what about the other guy, the guys from Heart? Did you guys just yeah, play something I, I recently? See them, a charity? Yeah, we do. A, we did a charity gig for a friend of friend of ours, and we get together now and then and uh, do worthy causes that you know would benefit from us getting together. It's kind of fun. I initially thought it would be kind of cool just to see if we still have it, if we still sound like we did. And from what I heard, you do. Yeah, we did. It sounded, <laughs> sounded exactly like the record. I mean, it sounded like we had played uh -huh. it yesterday. And Nancy, of course, married Cameron. Right. And you became friends with Cameron, and you mm -hmm. were telling me before taping uh, that you guys would go to the beach and he would run ideas by you in the mm -hmm. water and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell me, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, when he, he would come on the road with us, and uh, being a writer like he is, he's always watching, he's always observing everything, and uh, he'll, he'll get little ideas, and so when he'd have some ideas, he would, we'd be swimming in the ocean or wherever it would be, and he'd, he'd go, what do you think of this idea? And he'd, he'd give me a quick mm -hmm. synopsis of a screenplay, and he'd say, is, is that weird or is that cool? Or, you know, that, that scene in Almost Famous with a plane flight, that's a real, that, that was a real flight one day with Hart. He was on the road with us, and we had a real, real <laughs> scary flight, and that went right into the script. You know. <laughs> That was in his next movie. You guys almost died, but he's still writing on the script. Don't miss Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. The half-hour Hollywood TV series features rock star interviews, entertainment news, segment guests, and more. Tune in on the web at focusinthemixwithdeniseames.com anytime around the world. Sponsored by Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Jazz Club in Eagle Rock. <laughs> Go ahead, ready? I'm Forrest Whitaker for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, and this is my daughter, True. Hi. Life is full of choices. And many years ago, I chose to become a vegetarian. And it's one of the best choices I've ever made. And since True's dad was a vegetarian, she decided to be vegetarian too. You may decide to go vegetarian for better health, for a better environment, or you could be like True and I and just decide you don't want to eat meat anymore. I love animals and I love being a vegetarian. I'm Forrest Whitaker. And I'm True Whitaker. And I'm we're vegetarian. And we're, we're vegetarians. vegetarians. Your beautiful backyard here, <laughs> including your mini grotto, which is one of your favorite <laughs> areas of this property that you have here in Malibu, which is stunning. You have a little story to tell about how you actually got this backyard. It has to do with the Les Paul. It does. <laughs> when we got the house, the front yard was landscape, but this backyard was all dirt. And when uh, my wife asked me, what are you looking for in a house? Because she was going to look, start looking around. I said, I like it to be up on a hill. I don't want it to be too close to anybody else and I want a swimming pool. I've always wanted a swimming pool all my life. So we found this house. It's up on a hilltop, not too close to anybody else. It had a big empty backyard. So I thought, well, I'm going to put, need to put some money together and really do this backyard up right. I've always wanted to do this. And so my wife was in the closet one day where all my guitars are, and she goes, it smells in here. It smells kind of musty in here. I go, honey, these cases are 50, 60 years old. I go, that's the smell of money. Mm. So... Shortly after that, I took one of those cases out and I sent it down to Dallas to the guitar show and I sold a Les Paul, a 1960 Les Paul Sunburst, real nice guitar, just one guitar. And I did the barbecue and the pool and the hot tub and the fire pit and the bar and the whole yard <laughs> with one guitar. And she goes, oh my God, you did that with one guitar? I go, yeah, and I have the closets full of those. That's awesome. And she goes... Yeah. It does smells smell good. like it smells money. Good. It smells good. <laughs> I like the way it smells. So I miss the guitar a little bit, but every day when my kids and me are swimming in the pool, I'm so happy I did that. So. Well, it's stunning. And, and also, <laughs> uh, we're showing the, the pool right now, and that actually, tell the audience what is in the middle. Well, there's three waterfalls, and under the second waterfall is the hot tub, and it's deep enough, it has a little grotto in the back with a seat behind there so you can sit behind the waterfall and get all the negative ions from the splashing water. And uh, plus my f kids like to pull that one on unsuspecting unsus people they're in the hot tub for the first time when they p turn on the waterfall. Hey! Hey! <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, no, we, we love that. I'm, I'm in that hot tub every single day. It's one of my rituals. <laughs> Lucky you. I know, huh? Bad company. Tell yeah. us uh, <laughs> a little bit about... Uh, Rock and roll fantasy, bad company. That's right, it is. It's just so much fun. Because to see these three guys together, mm -hmm. um, 
they have such a history and such a legacy together, and they've written so many great songs together. You know, so to actually play, I've been playing these songs with Paul for many, many years, but then actually playing with Simon Kirk on the drums and Mick Ralphs, the guy who wrote the songs on the on the guitar. It's just sometimes I go, what? How did I get here? I'm looking around hmm. at the most British of all British <laughs> bands. And I'm playing, you know, in London at Wembley, and I'm going. I'm from California. You're what from am I? Hollywood. What am I yeah, doing here? Exactly. How did I get here? I love those guys dearly. They're just such great guys, and uh, it's, it's just an honor to can, share the stage with them. Can you do a fake British accent like Madonna does? I can. <laughs> do it. I've got to do it right now. Yes, right no. now. Um, I can do it a little bit, especially when I'm talking to Simon, because Simon's got the London accent like that. And so I love to do do uh, you know Cockney slang with him. Oh my gosh, you can do it really good. And then there's the Paul Rogers Band, which I want to make a quick note. Uh, aside from you, they're all Canadian. Right. And one of the big sites that picks us up is BraveWords.com, which is Canada's premier mm -hmm. uh, rock website. So I want to give a shout out to Metal Tim at Brave yeah. Words. And the band's based in Vancouver now. All the Canucks. Yeah, all the Canucks up there. And we play up there quite a bit. We did a tour last year with uh, Bachman Turner through Canada, which was huge and great fun. What is your favorite Bad Company song? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I like playing Gone, Gone, Gone. That's a heavy mm -hmm. one that Boz Burrell, the bass player, is no longer with us. Hmm. He wrote that. I love playing the song Bad Company. Oh, totally. Okay. That's a great yeah. song, and it's an E flat, so it's not as easy as it seems. Mm. He's always going through the catalog, changes the set almost every night, always introducing new songs that he's just written and songs that they've never done before. Like now on the Bad Company set, we're doing a song called Electric Land that they never played back in the day. Paul Reed Smith guitars. Mm -hmm. I think I spy one next to you. Yeah, the and mean uh, green man Alicia is here. <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> the Green Man Alishi. That's a that's a Fleetwood Mac song. Okay. Peter Green. And you actually endorse these guys, and um, yeah. they made a signature guitar for you. It's a limited edition Golden mm -hmm. Eagle. Yeah. All right. And uh, tell us a little bit about this guitar. It's very special to you, and <laughs> the strings are very interesting. I just got this in a trade with a friend of mine, and it's just a cool green guitar with a rosewood neck that has no finish on it so it's just raw wood mm -hmm. which I like the way that feels but this is just my most recent stage guitar and uh, I work with these guys who make these funny strings that are neon coated strings so I figured well, I got the green guitar I gotta put the green strings on there and I got the green shirt to go with the green strings yeah you bought so the just... shirt to match this in Texas the yeah, other day right that's, that's hilarious correct. yeah okay but I like to I like to bring do. out I like to bring out different instruments every time we go out you know I like to show them different guitars and things code works guitar effects this is the Barracuda mm -hmm. T tell us about that well these guys called me up out of nowhere a few years ago and they said we'd like to duplicate the flanger that you use on Barracuda. Do you still have it? And I go, yeah, I do. It was a custom thing that my tech made it in, at the time. Mm. And so they said, well, just send it to us and so we can reverse engineer it. So I sent it to them. They opened it up, and it was complete unobtainium. Everything was obsolete. There wasn't a single component <laughs> that you could still get. I said, okay, well, then forget that idea. Let's, instead of trying to duplicate it, let's just duplicate the sound. Use it. Use modern components, but get it to sound just like the old one. And they did. They worked on it for a year. It's that heart guitar sound that mm. you, you know you hear it right away. You go, oh, that's the yeah, extremely distinctive. The, yeah, it's just certain, just a certain sound to it. So we just decided to uh, put it out as a pedal, and it's their number one pedal. Hmm, well, we Prince even has one. HML guitars. Ah, that's just. Um, well, just a fun sideline for me. I design expensive custom guitars. Yeah, they're totally hand built. They're totally hand built by one guy in mm -hmm. Seattle, and they're really, really beautiful. I've only made 21 since 1998, so one or two a year. Mm -hmm. uh, they take a long time to build, but, and they're expensive, but they're really, really nice. When I finish one, I do take it on stage okay. and, and play it. And there get some go. pictures for the for the guy who ordered it. Okay. Yeah, and I got to make sure it works good. Exactly. You have to test it. Yeah. Secret weapon. Solar Secret release. weapon, my solo record. Yeah.
You had a lot of guest stars on there. You had a lot of big time friends. I did. I recorded that right here in this house. You did not. I did. I had Jolyn Turner in the living room singing vocals. No. <laughs> I signed it to a label in Europe and it actually did very well, did real well in England. Do you know where people can get it? Can they get it on Amazon or I think iTunes? so. I think so. And you can you can get it from Frontiers Records. That's the label in Italy. Gotcha. They distribute it everywhere in the world but America, but I'm sure you can order it from them. All right, and I want to switch gears a little, uh, to a more personal thing. You have a few beautiful dogs running around your property. I They're do. rescues. Mm -hmm. You are actually the head of a, uh, the celebrity uh, yeah, face I'm like spouse of, person, yeah. of Mutt Match LA. It's a local organization that finds homes for rescue. They match the mutt and the person, mm -hmm. right? So they have a list of people and a list of dogs, and they cross-reference and little matchmakers. <laughs> and how long have you been doing that? What made you get into that? Uh, my next-door neighbor over here and her friend, uh, Bobby Kimball's wife from Toto, Bobby Kimball, his wife, Jasmine, is the head of the whole thing and so she just asked me if I'd come out and we did a photo shoot right here on the mm. they brought some dogs over and did some pictures and I attend their events and just try to raise awareness there's nothing better than rock stars loving animals gotta do it well, heart so. heart was the doggiest band you ever met I mean everybody had dogs Nancy brought little Wambi with her wherever she went mm -hmm. this dog went on tour with us this dog got us kicked out of the best hotels in the, in the, in right the world on. and uh, we always had dogs and you know my dog Godzilla my great Dane would go stay at Nancy's house and we'd go on tour. What is coming up for you next? Well next Friday I go to fly to JFK in New York LA to JFK and do a run of five shows with a solo band. We're going to Oklahoma, we're doing some shows with Leonard Skinner in Michigan and Illinois. Then I come back for a few days, and then I go to Norway and Poland with the solo band. We're doing a blues festival in Norway that we've mm. been to before. And then we're playing at this incredible resort in the middle of Poland. I've never been to Poland, so that should be really unusual and different. And You said that you're halfway done with your second solo, so mm -hmm. when can we expect that? Because I'm sure a lot of people will be interested oh, in that. Oh my, I don't know. I'm dancing as fast as I can. <laughs> Maybe summer next year? Yeah, well, I'd love to get it done this winter. Oh, okay. Hopefully, because so during the winter I don't travel as much, so I may get it done this okay. winter. I've got four things finished, and I'm very happy with them so far. So there you go, Howard. Thank you so much again for letting us in. Thanks your for coming out. Home. Let's go swimming. Totally. Hi, <laughs> we're getting into bikinis. See you. <laughs> Where can you enjoy live music every night? Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Jazz Club, located in Eagle Rock, the heart of L.A. Open daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, serving the city since 1954. Authentic Italian cuisine, generously poured cocktails, all served in a casual, festive atmosphere. Come for the food, drinks, and friendly people. Stay for the live music. Full bar area, private party room, catering, and takeout. For reservations, just call 323-254-9138. See you at Colombo's. And now it's time for your viewer comments. Deborah Stalker says, just saw the Great White episode on Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames, and I loved it. And Joey Meyer says, Great White, my old buddies. And Vincent Cordero says, I saw the Great White episode, great job. And I also saw that you know Rex Brown and Vinny Apice. Well, that is correct. Of course, Rex is from Pantera, and Vinny is from Dio in Heaven and Hell, and now they have a band together called Kill Devil Hill. And finally, Mark Fenn says, another great show with Great White. Like the new longer hair, keep up the great work. Thank you so much for saying so. Well, thanks you guys for sending in those comments. And if you would like a chance for us to read your comment on the air, all you have to do is find us on Facebook at Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. Leave a comment on the wall, and we may pick yours to read on the air. Well, that does it for this edition of the show. I certainly hope you enjoyed our exclusive interview with Howard Lees of Heart, and of course, now you know of Bad Company. If you're thinking about adopting a pet or two, please only get them from a shelter and never purchase them and always spay and neuter your four-legged children i am your host denise ames and i want to say thank you for letting me rock your world